Hi, I'm Margaret. My sister Alice and I are going to teach you the art of making homemade, traditional homemade tamales. So these tamales started with my grandmother. They're her recipe initially, then passed on from my mom to us. And my sister has tweaked them a little, but they're still as good as ever. Hi, I'm Alice, I'm Margaret's sister, and today we're gonna start with um, pork tamales. So we have about nine pounds of pork, which I use the boneless uh, pork shoulder butt. Um, I generally go to Costco and just buy the big package and they come in two separate pieces. And then what I like to season it with is pretty basic and I like to roast mine as opposed to boiling it because it just adds an extra dimension of flavor. Um, I just like to use pepper, salt and pepper, um, some garlic powder if you have garlic powder just depending on your liking um, and just season it very liberally because they're big pieces of meat. So make sure when you season it that you show your meat a little love because it likes that. So then your pepper, same thing. You could use garlic powder or garlic salt. Um, it's not really going to make much of a difference just because it's a, it's a big cut of meat. Okay, so now your shoulder butts are seasoned and ready to go in the oven at 350 for about four hours. I would check it at four hours. Um, you'll know if it needs longer when you test it. And then pop it in the oven. Now we're going to uh, prepare the um, red salsa or the red chile for the pork tamales. I prefer to use the, the New Mexico chili and the California chili. Depending on how many tamales you make, depends on how much chili you should use or how spicy you like it. Um, so for the, the amount of meat that we have cooking, which is the nine pounds, um, I would use about two pounds, one pound of each, depending on the size of the chili. So this one's a pretty big long one. Um, I'll typically use the kitchen scissors or you could use a little knife. Just go through, clean out your chilies, take the stems off, take as many of the seeds out as possible and put them in your stock pot. I would say for at least a half hour. So once you're done cooking your chilies and they've reconstituted and you cook them for about a half hour, um, I like to take the chilies out um, and put them in something where they can cool a little bit um, and keep the juice separate from the chili. We're going to reincorporate the juice once we put it in the food processor. So we're just going to put them, or put some, um, in, the blend, in the food processor. You're going to do it in batches um, because it won't, it's not going to all fit and you don't want the juice spilling out. To that, um, we're going to add some salt and some garlic. You're just going to want to use your salt pretty liberally. That's about, um, I would say maybe a tablespoon of salt. This is just minced garlic. You can use fresh garlic or you can use um, chopped garlic. Um, a little bit goes a long way, so you don't want to use too much because then the garlic is going to overpower the chili. That's about how much? That's about a teaspoon, I would say. I'm just going to put a little bit of juice and add more as I go because I don't want it to overflow. What did you put there? That was about two and a half cups. Okay, so then we're just going to pulse, just kind of see where, we at, where we're at here. What I'm looking for is to make sure that the majority of your chili is pureed. Um, 
even though you're going to strain it, you're going to want to make sure it's pureed as much as possible. And then it should not be too thick. This is about what it should look like. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. And then you can see the pieces of chili there. Um, we're going to strain it so that you don't eat those chunks. And then carefully pour it in because you don't want to splatter it everywhere. So when you're mixing you can also apply pressure with the, the bottom of your spoon to make sure you get all of the juices. Okay, once you push all the juices through, this is kind of what you have left. It's the chili pieces. Um, this is, we're just going to discard this. Okay, so this is after four hours at 350 um, in the oven. Um, as you can see, it looks beautiful. I had to take a taste over here. And what I do is after it's done, I let it cool. Um, and it takes a while to cool because it's, you know, nine pounds of meat. I'll cube it up and then um, add the chili to it. The juice that's in at the bottom of the pan, you can reserve um, and put that particular juice in your tamale masa. Um, it's just another additional layer of flavor. So we're just going to fry it up a little bit. And to this, we're going to add one and a half teaspoons of cumin and then how much salt you want to use depends on you so you're just going to want to cook this until it browns evenly I would say about 10 to 15 minutes now that the meat has browned and it has these crunchy little bits on it um, all we're going to do is add the red chili that we made earlier. Um, and you just want enough of the chili to be evenly distributed with all the meat. For now, that's about four cups of the juice or the chili. So your, your chili and your meat should have like a gravy-like consistency. Not too dry, not too soupy. This is what you want so that you have an, some juice in your tamale, but not too much so that it doesn't run all over the place. So in the end of making your filling for your pork tamale, this is what it should look like. Okay, so now we're gonna make chicken tamales with green chili. They're very flavor flavorful and a great alternative if you don't eat meat. Why you won't eat meat, I don't know, but I do. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. Anyway, they're very flavorful and what we're gonna start with is the sauce. Next, we're gonna do the salsa that I like to put in um, to my chicken tamales. This tomatillo salsa that I'm making, I also like to use it in my masa. I use it in all my masa for my pork tamales, for my uh, cheese and spinach tamales, and for my chicken tamales. I make the masa the same for all of my tamales. Um, and I also use this tomatillo salsa in the cheese and spinach tamales to give it a kick. It's pretty easy to make. I have here some tomatillos, your yellow onion, or you can use white onions. Um, serrano peppers or you could use jalapeno peppers. We like the serrano because they're a little bit hotter than the jalapeno. Um, limes and uh, cilantro and fresh garlic or you could use minced or chopped garlic um, and salt for seasoning. To roast them, first you got to take off the husk. It's a little bit sticky. Um, you're just, it's pretty easy. They come off like that. You're going to wash them and then we're just going to cut them in half. Face down on a cookie sheet and you could just spray it with Pam or whatever kind of cooking spray you use. And then I use about a pound and a half of tomatillos, um, half of an onion or you could use a whole onion depending on your liking. Um, I like onion so I would probably use the whole thing. Um, 
then depending on the heat factor, serranos are hotter than jalapenos. Um, so I might use three of them. Um, if you want a mild or not so hot, you may want to use one, one and a half, and then just check it and add as you go along. But I like to roast them too, so I'll pop them in here with my tomatillos. You can roast your garlic too um, if you want to, or you could put it in fresh. Um, I'm going to put it on the broiler on low. Once your tomatillos and your onions and your chili are all done broiling, this is what they're going to look like. I like to leave the roasted skins on. Um, it just looks pretty when it's all done. Half of your roasted onion. I like to leave the seeds in for the heat factor. I'm going to put two for now and then kind of go from there and see if I need to add some more. A little bit of garlic, a teaspoon and a half of salt, and I'm going to pulse it. I'll use a, probably about a cup of this with my green enchilada sauce and my chicken. Um, and then I'll put some of this in the masa too for flavoring. So this is what it looks like when it's done after I add the cilantro. Um, I don't like to add it when it's pureeing in the food processor just for texture and I just like the way it looks better. But you certainly can if you want to. You can also use dried cilantro if you want to but I think fresh is better. Um, and then like I said earlier, I use this in my masa. I use it um, in my cheese and spinach uh, tamales. And I also use it with my chicken tamales. For the chicken tamales, what I do is I go to Costco and I buy their whole roasted chickens um, because they're already seasoned and they are great. They're better than the store. Um, market ones, but you can cook them yourself, you can boil them, you can roast them yourself. I just prefer to go there because it's already done and all I have to do is shred it. So this is actually for chickens, but I'm going to show you what you would use for one chicken because one chicken will make about two dozen tamales depending on how much chicken you like to put in your tamales. So your roasted chicken goes into Oops, your pan. Sorry. You're going to add your can of enchilada sauce. Okay, so this is one cup of the tomatillo salsa we made earlier. So we're going to put about a cup and a half in there. About a tablespoon. I would start out with a tablespoon. Cumin can be strong. Um, for the salt, I would probably use the same, about one tablespoon, and then you can go from there and add more if you need more. Um, you're going to cook it for about 20 minutes, um, and that's pretty much it for the chicken tamales.